So, you guys seem to enjoy post finum and I enjoyed post finum as well. So, uh, how about we play a little bit more post finum And this time, we're going to be doing something a little bit more central and a little bit more uh, in tune with the themes of the mod. So, as you should know by now, uh, post finum is a alternate history mod where the point of divergence from our own timeline is that Carthage won the Punic Wars. And now that has led to the entirety of the Italian peninsula almost being Punic. And the Romans who lost to the Punic Wars are in a little bit of exile. They were pushed north and now they reside in Italia. And that is the country we are going to play in uh, this this campaign of, of post fightum. Let's go. So as we can see here on the start screen, we have a little bit of information about Italia. Obviously, the Punic culture and religious practices are seeping into the Italian peninsula, and that has pushed us as the Romana faith Italians up into the north. We also became somewhat of the most powerful player on the Italian peninsula, and so much so that a coalition of Rome, Naples, Florence, and Sorenza invaded us and defeated us in Ferrara in just one year ago. Uh, now we have a new government under the oversight of the Scarlet Delegation. So, there's a, a little bit of interesting uh, backstory to our little situation here. Uh, and hopefully we'll be able to get rid of this upstart imposed government and, you know, set out on our own and, and be good again. Or maybe we'll uh, try and take back the Italian peninsula for the Latins. Speaking of the Latins, we have this faith here. We are the Romana faith. Uh, I'm not sure why they chose that name. Personally, I would have chosen just Latin, but it is it is what it is. We get national tax modifier, innovativeness gain, and local construction costs, which are some really nice modifiers. And we also have a holy site mechanic. So our holy sites are Medlanum, which is our capital. We've got Rome, naturally. Uh, Mazuna, I actually don't know where that is, so let us go and find it. That is down here in Sicily, okay. That makes sense, uh, sort of. Uh, we have Carthage, which is an interesting one, and then Athens, which is a bit of an interesting one as well. Now, if you look at the flavor text, it'll tell you why they've chosen Athens as the holy site. Um, our people are descended from the Hellenes, and in many ways they share much of our religion. While true, um, the Romans did believe that they came from this area, uh, it was less here and it was more they thought they came from Troy. Personally, I would have made Troy their holy site, but it, I mean, it's not my mod, I don't get to control it. Uh, Carthage is there because it is a city of sin and evil spirits, which I guess makes sense. And because we obviously control one of the holy sites of our faith, we get to cl click a blessing. So, Manpower and True Faith Provinces, 20% is very, very nice. Stab Gossip minus 25 is amazing. Mystery Strength plus 3, which is going to be very handy for converting the Italian Peninsula. Uh, land Fire Damage plus 10%. Good late game, not so useful in the early. And then Spirit of Unity for Years of Separatism is also a very nice buff to have. I'm not sure which one I'm going to pick just yet, but um, maybe we'll come back to that after I've looked around a little bit more. We're also naturally a member of the Italian Federation, which is this mod's version of the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, and it looks like that. We are the largest player in it, but of course it is a dominant faith of Punic, so we can't actually vote for ourselves. And currently we are voting for Illyria. Uh, which could be a decent option, it's certainly better than Rome, because obviously I would like to go and conquer my way down here. Um, but we'll see how that plays out. There's probably going to be quite a lot of uh, different events and incidents that will happen here, maybe some that we can cause ourselves. Uh, maybe try to destroy this little Italian federation or take control of it. I have yet to decide. And here it is, the Scarlet Delegation. It arrived in Italia at the start of 1444, named for their iconic red robes, which while common in Rome, are not so fashionable up north. After Avilion I was defeated by the Grand Alliance, his successor, Ugio II, was forced to accept the oversight of the Scarlet Delegation. The delegation is composed of a group of nobles from all across the loyalist parts of the Federation, and it's their duty to monitor the actions of the court in Milan, and report back anything that could be a threat to the stability of the region. Um... That's awful. 
aggressive expansion impact, and all power costs is woeful. So we have a decision, expel the Scarlet Delegation, let's have a look at that. What we need is one stability and 12 admin points a month, or I could be a lawgiver and four admin. Uh, at the moment, I'm Silver Tongue with three. So if I can make 12 admin a month, God, that's going to be quite difficult, isn't it? Um, I can get another plus two there. Uh, what was it? 11 or 12? What was it again? 12. Ugh. I get to eight, then a level five advisor. Um, or I need a level four advisor, sorry. Uh, it's, yeah, no, that's going to be quite difficult to get rid of. But I feel like I need to get rid of that as early as possible. Um, okay, we can get actually this as well. Monthly admin points, plus one. Uh, let's get that one as well, just while we're at it. Uh, so now I only need a level three. It's going to be so difficult. Um, I'm, I'm just going to bite the bullet and get it. Although, you're only 360. That's That feels like half price, but it's probably not. We have Italian traditions. Giving us minus 10. Of course, we should check our traditions. Advisor cost minus 10%. Landleader shock is beautiful as well. Missionary strength there. Goods produced. Siege ability. Institutions spread. Uh, army tradition and land fire. We got uh, estates equilibrium and corruption. And then infantry combat ability. Not a bad set of ideas by any means. I'm quite happy with that. Um, and we are going to click this button immediately. We are not going to be able to afford this guy. He is going to have to get yeeted away um, but for now this is kind of an important task and I guess what we can do then is take encourage prophecies as our first uh, little pick there which means to step up I only need 99 Ugh, it's it's gonna be yeah no we're gonna get it we're gonna lose some money for a few months um, we're gonna get the stab we're gonna get rid of of the Scarlet Delegation, and then we are going to be very happy. While I was just setting up the rest of my country, I decided I was going to ally with Lombardia, because why not? They're to my north, they are our Romana religion, made a, made a good bit of sense. Uh, but it also popped up a mission complete for me, so let's have a look at this. The Lombard League, an alliance of strength and unity, advances our interest and asserts our influence in the region. So I need to be allied with Lombardia, um, or insult them. I mean, I think, yeah, allied is fine. Uh, and I get 25 dip for every plus 50 of Lombardia's opinion of us. Uh, I think we're going to save that then until your opinion of me is 200. That's That just makes sense. Why would I waste 50 dip when I could just take 50 dip? Right? Uh, let's get... Oh, God, this is a terrible fleet. Uh, let's try and sell these boats, actually. Uh, but yeah, no, we'll uh, ally with you. I've also rivaled, of course, Rome. I've rivaled Sardinia because they rivaled me. And I've also rivaled Alemannia because they're pretty weak. And maybe we can, along with our ally Lombardia, get a uh, free amount of uh, monarch points from them in the not-too-distant future. Okay, we're in 1445. I am now going to take the stability... And we are going to get rid of this Scarlet Delegation. The interference of the Scarlet Delegation has held back our nation for years. Technically one year, right? It came in 1444. It's now 1445. We got rid of it. It's gone. It's good. We have at last had enough of them. And do not fear retaliatory action that will come as a consequence of our actions. I, I don't care. Get out of here. Italia has l had a long and troubled history with the Federation. Due to our staunch Romana faith and our refusal to introduce the Punic rites to our court or capital, many outside the north of the Federation have long distrusted us, and even our close neighbours continuously plot our downfall. As such, every move we make must be carefully planned so that we do not greatly upset the Adirim that it sparks yet another war against us. In 1443, the forces of the Grand Adirim and his allies, known as the Grand Alliance, invaded Italia and sacked our once glorious capital of Milan. They captured and executed the previous king, Avilion, purportedly for the crime that led to the war in the first place, trumped up charges of restricting the freedom of the merchants of Sorenza on the Po River. In his place, they installed Ugio, but only on the condition that he accept the oversight and ultimate power of the Scarlet Delegation, a group of Punic nobles sent to live in our court to keep an eye on things in Adirim's stead. 
These nobles have been nothing but trouble, and every one in the kingdom has been longing for the day they will leave since the day they first arrived. The day has finally come! The virtuous and noble Rex Ugio II finally grew the courage to grab fate by the nose and issued the order of expulsion for the Scarlet Delegation. If they do not leave the kingdom within a week, they will be relieved of their heads by our Justicia. People are celebrating on the streets, and the court seems abound with joy, for we will live under the yoke of Roma no more. So we sign the order, expel the troublemakers from our lands, which is just going to get rid of that, and every Punic guy gets minus 50 opinion of us. I mean, that was... Yeah. The Adirian will decide how to respond to the expulsion. They will likely see it as upsetting the peace between us and may launch retaliatory action. Well, it is what it is. And now to stab up is only 94. Because we do have a little bit of religious issues, uh, but, you know, we're going to work on that. So, yeah, my ally of Illyria just got real mad uh, at me doing that, but, I mean... I don't really care. Right, now we're going to get rid of you because you are mad expensive and I can't afford you. Um, I do think I, I require uh, some of these guys, though. I'll grab you and you. I think if I have an admin administrator as well, that would be wise, but I don't know. Yeah, I can afford it. Let's get uh, monthly reform progress modifier. Uh, that'll be quite nice to get this going as fast as possible. Lovely stuff. All right, I've sorted out my estates. I'm pretty happy with what I got right now. Um, maybe I gave too much to the Zaramello because I would also like to take Land of Commerce at some point. I haven't got that yet because I didn't have enough uh, land control by me. But also I'm at, you know, I've only got five out of six. So I need to get rid of something when I want to take that. Uh, but anyway, taking all of my estates, including some new stuff here, like encourage internal competition, I have completed an mission, the Council of Medlanum. Convening the Council, we address critical issues, forging alliances and policies that steer the future of our Federation. So we get the Council of Medlanum event. Today, representatives of the seven most important cities in Italia met in our glorious capital for a much needed meeting. Chaos had gripped the country, and to many it seemed the world had turned upside down since their last meeting. The delegation sat in the conference hall of the Palace of Kings for hours until they finally an agreement was reached. Within those hallowed halls, many men had called for the Rex to reissue the Burgum Decrees, a set of policies and guarantees issued after the previous mission that set out Romana supremacy and independence. But many contended that it was these decrees that led to the Grand Adirum invading in 1444. Others implore the Rex to abolish the decrees and focus on repairing the country and stabilizing our diplomatic reputation so that we might be able to avoid another costly war. What do the Rex decide? So, gain of stability and some prestige. Okay. I mean... Be nice. Or 75... I mean, I kind of want that stability. I'm not going to lie. I did just spend a uh, stability. So, yeah, we're... I mean, what can Rome really do? At the end of the day, what can they actually do? I will say as well, my, my idea here is, like, you're, you're hug boxed up. You've got so many allies, this is kind of disgusting. But, Serenza is one of those allies. So, if I attack them, you know, maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to sneak in and get a war against Rome without a big old hug box, you know, ball like happening. That's, that's the plan, that's the idea. So here we need workshops and counting houses, so that's going to take a little while to get the Mantua guilds. Here, my manpower needs to go up, my army size needs to go up, and I need an general, and I'll get a bunch of permaclaims, which will be quite nice. Uh, but that's, yeah, we'll, we've got to work on that. So, we have converted Cremona to the glorious Romana faith, and also, we have enough manpower now that we have rallied the Holy Army. Uh, we also needed a general, and I got a 4232, which is, I mean, I would prefer the 4 in the shock category, but, you know, we can deal with this for now. Rallying a holy army, we stand ready to defend our beliefs and territories against all adversaries. Uh, so, yeah, we get manpower recovery speed and recover morale speed for 25 years and permanent claims on quite a bit. So, we'll take that, and, yeah, we've got permanent claims on basically all of northern Italy, which is actually fantastic. Um, whether we're going to be able to take much of it, you know, it's uh, it's going to be quite difficult. Um, of course, 
This, I believe, would be my best bet, but that's still 38,000. Um, I'm currently currying favors with all of my allies. Maybe that's going to be able to do something there. Uh, but also things like uh, if I was to attack Modena, for example, then Lecho would uh, come in. Uh, they're transferring trade to Genoa, though, who would call in... Um, oh, actually, just those two. And yeah, okay, I'm going to start making a claim on that guy. Uh, I've, I've found a way in. We're good now. I suppose I could just attack Genoa directly, and they'd call in Lecho and Medena. Obviously, I don't want to call in Rome. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's a better idea. Uh, because they've only got 18,000 troops total, and I have 18,000 troops on my own. Uh, we are going to be losing a bit of money, of course, uh, because eco-wise, we're not in the best position as of right now. But... We'll make do. Of course, he's going to call in Modena, which is... Everyone's sat in a hill. It's quite quite irritating. Uh, but if we move our way to uh, Ticinium, uh, then as soon as I've got full morale, I'm going to attack Genoa, stack wipe him, move up north, attack Lecho, stack wipe him, move to here. And it's just going to be a, a nice, simple, easy, little, breezy little war. Hopefully. All right. Time to go... I could even call in my allies. I'm not going to. I'm going to save that for when they're necessary. Um, hopefully you don't get any allies. Let's see how this goes. Hopefully we're going to go stack wipe early. Uh, you have no general. You still have no general. That's perfect. Nice. Stack wipe. I'm going to consolidate and drop this zero stack. Uh, and we're going to go and fight... Uh, Mantua, that seems like a good fight there. Or are you just going to run away? That's also fine. Interesting, the... Oh, yeah, it's Modena, not Mantua. Never mind. Alright, caught you there. Lovely stuff. That's another stack wipe. Consolidate, drop the zero stack. And we win this war without too much issue. Uh, the only question is how... Well, that's just irritating. Like, that's that's just... Ah, whatever. You want to go 5,000 troops? I got 15! The only question is how much we can actually take in this war uh, due to the fact that we exist in the Holy Roman Empire, which is, you know... Not the Holy Roman Empire, the Holy Italian League Federation thing. You know what I meant. Either way, let's drop off some troops, get that siege going, and uh, yeah, it's going to take a little while for this to fire, so uh, I guess we'll be back when we've conquered stuff. So, the siege of Leuchum, Leucum, Leucum, the siege of that place is done, let's take it. It's 25 aggressive expansion, which obviously, I don't like aggressive expansion, but, you know... Taking it early is a good plan. Uh, that is an unnecessary fort. If I'm going to have a fort, it's going to be in Komum, not in Leocum. Uh, also, I just decided to put some troops here because it was only, you know, needed three, and they've almost breached it already, which is a uh, real fast siege. They, more, they almost won that siege race. Um, naturally, the Emperor is being a bit of a Hillock. But, you know, what could you expect from some punic swine? Nothing, anything uh, unexpected there. So we have an option now, of course. I've sieged Modena. We don't have a claim on it, but I could make him a vassal for 23 aggressive expansion. Which isn't terrible, but it does mean I wouldn't be able to do anything with Genoa, and I do have a claim on Genoa. Uh, we could also make Genoa... I mean, taking both is not feasible. But it's close. If I take this now as a vassal, a couple of years pass before I siege this or piece these guys out, I think we might be in a decent enough position that we might get away with it. So, yeah, let's, let's vassalize. Let's vassalize this guy. 
the aggressive expansion is, you know, it's it's not low. It's 30-something, but it's going down, right? How fast is it going down is the question. The fact is, as well, this guy is Romana. The guy that I conquered up here was Romana, and this guy here is also Romana. So, generally, these Pudics probably shouldn't care too much. Um, but, yeah, now we just got to kind of wait and see what kind of situation we're in in a few months, years, etc. Gotta get that aggressive expansion to just just drip away just a little bit more. So they uncond immediately, which kinda sucks. They the the call for peace hasn't gone out yet, so this war exhaustion isn't starting just yet, but they are blockading me, which does kinda hurt. There's the call for peace. I think we can wait until a little bit before, you know, January, right? We're pretty close. And either I can take this land myself, which would be 24.5 aggressive expansion, or I can not, and I can make myself another vassal for 20 aggressive expansion, and then there is no danger of a coalition. I'm just going to do that now. I don't think we need to wait. That seems like a really good start. We have a couple of vassals. Um, yeah, no. Unfortunately, these guys don't have any, like, cores that I can feed into them, but that's a good start, in my opinion. And also, I guess I can rival another dude. Uh, Kart Mall. Do you have any allies? You don't? Okay, this is perfect. I wasn't even expecting this, but if we do that, we can go and attack you with a, uh, show strength and get some mono points. That'll be fantastic. Okay, so Kart Mall did just get wrecked by Punicum. Uh, they have two provinces and still 10,000 troops, interestingly enough. Uh, but I am going to immediately go and attack them because uh, those mono points ain't going to stick around forever. And I, I, want, I want them. Like, from those, those are my monarch points. So we'll get them. Uh, I'm also just going to take that tech. And yeah, I'm pretty pretty comfortable with my start. Oh oh boy, that that did not take long at all. We just we we just won. The the siege lasted all of like twelve seconds. Uh, I guess maybe it's because their capital was moved and they had very low amount of defenders. That might be it. Uh, but either way, that is a free three hundred monarch points from me. I could have attacked them to take land, but again, the aggressive expansion is kind of high, uh, and they're the wrong religion, so the Punics would actually care. But yeah, that's a good uh, little war to start us off. Uh, now, two free uh, guys to rival, I guess. Lombardia, obviously not going to be in there. Uh, you're rivaled with Illyria, my ally, so maybe we just rival you back. Or just rival you, even, I should say. And then... Southern Walls has a couple of allies. You have a couple of allies, but your allies are smaller. Let's uh, rival... Let's rival Aravia. Because they rivaled me. So that makes sense. Alright, lovely. A thing has happened! Lombardia tells us about the event of the Gallic Menace. They are a bit of a menace, not gonna lie. Uh, they went with request entry as part of the Federation as their choice of action. The threat posed by Gaul has grown too much for Lombardia to bear. They seek entrance into the Italian Federation to protect them from their aggressive neighbour. While this would be an unorthodox entry, there are many within the Federation who would see the Lombards as brothers, despite their Romana faith. Others fear that including more Romana people in the alliance would upset the delicate balance sorry, balance, between their faith and the Punic one, and could lead to further religious instability down the line. We have an incident... So, of course, I'm going to choose uh, a greater their entry. No, no, no. Uh, brothers, accept the brothers into the alliance. At the moment, we are winning. Uh, the... What is the emperor choosing at the moment? The emperor favors this option. Okay, nice. Nice, nice, nice. So, hopefully, we're going to get Lombardi into the empire. Uh, I feel like that's going to be good for us. 
I can't see how this would ever possibly go wrong. Let's go. The Chancellor reports that Lombardia seeks protection. The accepted Brothers Inter Alliance option was picked. Lombardia has joined the Italian Federation as a prince. Um, also, we impacted, oh, sorry, enacted imperial reform, so I have gotten extra legitimacy, um, and federal provinces get local dev cost minus 5%. Very nice indeed. Um, the Adirim, which is the name of the, uh, you know, the emperor, is, uh, yeah, they, they get an extra diplomat. I don't really care. And they give a CB on non-members holding federal territory. That's, it is what it is. Who cares about that? So, if we have a look, what is... Is the next one anything good? All members of the Federation get improved relations. Oh, I like that. Um, give CB on non-members boring the Empire to force them to join. Interesting. I quite like that. Manpower modifier for us as well. Uh, that seems fine. Federation members get local ship cost. That's fine. Uh, I like construction cost as well. What about here? Possible advisors and autonomy change? Quite nice. And I also get ele advisor cost because I'm a le an elector. Uh, you know what? I like all of those. Uh, decentralization is probably where I want to go as well, unless I can become the emperor somehow. Then we want to centralize the heck out of places. Uh, that seems like a great idea. Um, I've also been thinking, would it be possible to convert all of these people to my religion. Uh, if I was to, for example, attack Parma, obviously, I don't think I can take any land right now, but if I can convert him to my religion, we can sort of fight back against this Punic incursion by converting uh, more and more princes to, you know, Romana. That seems like a really good idea. I don't know if it's possible. I think I might want to try it, though. Uh, attacking you is... no. Uh, how about attacking you? No, 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 no. Okay, how about you? That would bring in Ferrara. You are already Romana. So are you, so that doesn't help at all. Um, we need to find a way. I'm going to look around. I'm going to find a way. Okay, I might have found a way. If we attack Kunea, who I do have a Conquest CP on, Kunea is Punic. Uh, they will bring in Pisa... Uh, which is here. Yeah, here. Obviously, they're Punic as well. Uh, they would bring in Urbino over here, and they would bring in Punicum, which would be the most destructive and, and potentially painful participant. However, they're also 84% for all of the provinces. So if converting a religion is the same cost as taking land maybe we got a chance here uh so i think i'm i think i'm gonna go with this let us wait a little bit to get our maintenance back up to full of course we are still losing a little bit of money uh but i do think this is actually a really good plan we also have uh, lombardy now at 200 relations so i'm going to take the lombard league mission which is going to give me 25 diplo points for every 50 of lombardy's opinion of us which I, you know what? I think that's a really cool idea, right? Mission trees in vanilla, obviously we've got a certain expectation of what they can do. And so whenever I see a mod that's done something in its mission tree that I've never seen before, like this, I really enjoy it. Um, that that kind of element is really nice. Uh, there's a bunch that I saw obviously with the Seleucids as well, getting the accepted cultures. Um, and, you know, it's, it's just, I just really like it. I just really, I just like it, okay? And we are going to take this now. Improved Relations is also going to help with our aggressive expansion. So, yes. Settle German veterans. I need eight provinces with five manpower each. And 40 army tradition, which should not be too difficult to get. Uh, if I manage that, then I get some manpower and manpower recovery speed. And, ooh. Yeah. Increased levies now gives manpower recovery speed. Scaling with the estate loyalty up to 20%. That's really quite nice. But anyway, my troops are ready. My enemy is weak. We have friends as well. And I think this is one of those cases where I'm going to call in... Let's leave Illyria out. Let's call Lombardia and Tyrol in. 
And I think that's going to be fine. Um, I'm not going to call you in as an extra. Urbino would call in who else? Urbino would call in Mosilum and Abruzum. That's not that bad. That's not that bad. Punicum, who do you have as a friend? You don't have anyone as a friend, but you would call in small dudes like Parma. You know what? I think this is maybe a case where I do want to bring in Illyria. Let's just do, let's just do the whole thing. Let's get everyone involved. Do that. Pisa as well. Not Pisa. No, Pisa was the bad one. Urbino as well. See, actually, I don't want to go down here, so maybe not Pisa. Let's just do it with Punicum. Let's just do it with Punicum. Do that, 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 that. And... Yeah, that's 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 going to be the war. And we're going to go for Parma first. Yeah, no, this is, this is fine. This war could not possibly be going any better. We stack wiped Parma. We came down here and stack wiped Urbino. They had like 8,000 troops. Uh, and then uh, Lombardy has actually come down and stack wiped Pisa. And so now we're basically sitting on three of the four participants that have no troops. Punicum's still got only 11,000, and we've got Cunea, who I also have not went and fought yet. Uh, so I think they're all just hiding out in, in in there. That seems like basically it. Uh, so I'm pretty happy. We just need to wait for these sieges now. And as soon as the sieges are complete, then, you know, we'll probably be able to piece them out to change their religion, hopefully. Right? Yes. Force religion is right there. Okay. We are in the money. Well, we're in the, we're in the relig religion, th you know, whatever, it's fine. Ooh, 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 there was a battle here in the mountains uh, with Kunea. Uh Illyria won it, but now Punicum's come in, and it's actually kind of close, because they've got decent general. They've got three shock versus zero shock, so it's completely counteracting the mountain. Ugh, I don't like, I don't like the fact we'd lost that. Losing in the mountains sucks. Come on, Tyrol, it's up to you. You gotta go. You gotta go. No, okay, you don't You don't gotta go. I mean, I guess it would be nice if you went. Uh, why do you have no shock on your guys? This is unacceptable. I'm gonna roll a general. Lucius Augustinus. And he's beautiful. He's beautiful. We're gonna go and we're gonna mess up Punicum's day. Uh, he's running. He's running. Uh, he, he ran all the way. Although, I mean, I say I say he's running in like a jovial voice there. But the fact is, uh, the AI just cheated. <laughs> this, this isn't anything against Post Finum. This is entirely a vanilla issue. The, the AI cheats horribly when it comes to having information that they should not have. It's, it's vile, honestly. Also, I got another, um, or my first reform, and we have a new thing here. Minister Alias Promotion. Advisor cost, monthly favor growth modifier, and Adirim Baldi Max Privileges. Uh, yeah, that seems reasonably good. Um, manpower is right there. Do I want the manpower, or do I want the advice? Yeah, I'm gonna go with the advisor cost. That just seems like a real nice thing to do. And the Adirim Baldi, now we can have seven. I don't think there's anything I want to take from them just yet, though. So, yeah, that's nice. That's nice. The Siege of Urbino is complete, and we are going to piece you out. Urbino will convert to Romana. This is actually beautiful. I could pillage as well. Um, it's not that expensive. I think I might. I'll get some war reps in there as well, and some money. And that is, in fact, gorgeous. Uh, I also did see that the Punicum troops decided that they wanted to come down here. Uh, let's make them wish that they did not do that by murdering their faces. Man march to Ostia. Man will not be marching out. Yeah, there he goes. And he's dead. And Pisa is also sieged. Fantastic news. Fantastic news. Um, a pillage there I don't think is worth it, just for one admin dev. I will force religion, I will take your money, and I will take your 
more money. A little bit less money. Slightly less money, but money still. Nice. Our faith is exceptional and it is growing. Their armies have been stack wiped. And this is it. These are the final three sieges. Uh, we are done with this war. And I'm feeling pretty, pretty happy with myself. I'm not going to lie. Uh, we're going to force religion on you. Of course, I want some money as well. And I'll take a little bit more money. And then you are now Romana. And then finally, you as well. I don't think a pillage is worth it. We're forcing religion. We're taking your money. We're taking your money. I'm not sure why you're denying me. Um, how about we take just a little bit less money then? There we go. Is this guy involved as well? I'm not going to bother going down there. This is the end of the war. We're not going to get to Malta. We're not going to get to wherever that is. Boom. Done. War ended. The amount of Romana in the Empire has grown vastly. And of course, hopefully we're going to be able to um, convert these provinces as well. Or at least he is. I'm not going to do it. And yeah, no, that's that's actually fantastic. Growing our religion in the Empire is a fantastic thing to do. It's going to leave us in a really good position moving forward because, of course, even if I want to go and murder this guy later on, it's going to be less aggressive expansion to take his provinces, um, according to the Punics, because they, they just don't care about us Romanans. So we'll just have to work on it. But anyway, that is where I'm going to leave the first episode of a brand new series, playing as Italia in post-Finum. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. I'm always interested in reading them. Uh, and until next time, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.